So uh, the Learning Sprints approach is an evolving approach here at St Thomas's, so it's only been about sort of a year that we've been uh, developing this practice, but we're looking at now how we can incorporate it into our, into our everyday uh, practices as a teacher to get the best outcome for the students. So this includes uh, linking it to our professional development, our uh, appraisal systems moving forward so that we just get the best out of teachers. And another possible outcome of that too is that looking at the professional development becoming more focused towards the teacher as opposed to a generalised approach to professional development. Actually what matters to that particular teacher, what's an area that they want to develop their expertise around and become more confident um, and, and then translating that confidence and expertise into the classroom. So a more targeted individual approach to professional development um, is another, another byproduct of this approach as well. One big thing we don't want our teachers to become is the idea of an unconscious bias, that by not asking for feedback they just accept what they're doing is right. And I guess that's a real danger in teaching uh, where we just assume, yeah, we've always done it, it's right. And that fear of getting student voice might challenge what we believe in. So we really want to be able to break that down and get staff to be able to see student voice as a positive in terms, as I said, of what they're doing well, but also what they need to change in their practice to get the most out of their students. It's really important to address the concept of vulnerability. You know, traditionally we can teach the same things and become really comfortable about what it is that we're teaching. Um, but then when the student voice comes back, that actually that's not relevant or you know, there's very little response, or, uh, response around that from the students. That we can feel vulnerable and why aren't the students choosing me? Why aren't I engaging them? But it's actually really important to understand that that's okay and I need to perhaps understand what it is that the students are asking a little bit more of. And if I try something and it doesn't work, that's awesome because now I know what doesn't work for this particular cohort, I can change and modify and find something that is really relevant. You know, it's, it's quite a, a, a relevant concept that yeah, failure is okay, but it's, it's only okay if you do something about it and then you make change and make it more purposeful. You know, it's, it's, I think it's a really important thing to become comfortable with around failing and, and see that as a positive experience. The reason we use learning sprints is that it's a real uh, good informal way of approaching teachers and supports their teacher workload as well. So uh, there's a lot of great research around learning sprints and, and the ease of uh, workload of teachers. So it's a way of just you know gathering data informally, observations, and then being able just to share that uh, in a really short, succinct amount of time. So meetings and workloads have changed at this school because we're more concise on what we're trying to actually teach in the classroom. And I think obviously we have more of those informal conversations to be more clear about what we want within a certain student or what we see we need to change. And I think that's helping adapt our approach within those situations. I think meetings have changed at the school because the focus is more specific because of learning sprints. Uh, you can sit in the meeting and sometimes people ask questions and it carries on for uh, so long. So having learning sprints and these formal meetings allows you to focus on specifics and move on a little bit quicker. And as teachers, sometimes we assume what the students need to need to know. And the idea we're trying to get across is there's only so much that you can plan. So as teachers, we can plan where the you know, curriculum coverage, uh, but then we need to be really agile in our approach from term to term, uh, depending on the time of year, what's going on in the students' lives, what's going on in the world. And having an agile and a learning sprint approach allows us to really adapt to what we see in front of us and gives our teachers a lot of confidence in terms of what they're doing, um, is doing it for the best for the students and their learning.